in this series working with arrays. We've gone through simple arrays, parallel arrays, and multidimensional arrays, and now we're going to talk about working with multidimensional arrays. In the last video, we uh, created a multidimensional array, and we uh, declared it, instantiated it, assigned values to it, and we printed the values out. And now what we're looking to do is to sort that. Now, we have more than a multidimensional array here. We also have a parallel array that we started in the third video. And we're carrying that third array, or that parallel array, forward through this multidimensional array. So here we have a multidimensional array of grades, and we have a dimensional, one-dimensional, single-dimensional array of names. In the last video, we also uh, added the grades together and divided them and came up with a, uh, a average grade here. Okay, so this one we're gonna do the sort names and we we sorted the names in the we started off sorting the first uh, s names in the simple array with the simple array dot sort method and in the array, the parallel array method we uh, did the uh, a sort and we created a, a double loop for sorting uh, um, method here to uh, to run through and sort the names, but then also rearrange the grade values, the individual grade values for the single array. Now we're going to rearrange the grade values for a multiple uh, array group, and so we're going to talk about that, explain that, and work through that. So I'm going to uncomment the uh, code we started out with. That was the uh, the uh, code we used for sorting our simple parallel array, and we're going to remove some of this code here. We've got the uh, two parts here. The first part, we are running an if uh, a for statement here. And let me just run through this real quickly. We have an outside for statement that runs through for the length of the array minus one and we're using the name array, the uh, first array, the string name array. And we're really running through that array twice and in that we're comparing um, the first two values and whichever value, whichever name is lower, it moves it up the list. So between Bob and Jenny, it leaves Bob where it is and it leaves Jenny where it is. But then it compares Jenny and Charlie and it moves Charlie up the list moves Jenny down. Uh, as it moves those names, we want it to move, now we want it to move this whole array of numbers. Before we were just moving one number, now we're going to move an array of numbers. And the key to, to making this work well is to remember that um, a multiple, a multi-dimensional array is really simply an array of arrays. Now we've created arrays of strings. We've created arrays of integers. Now we're looking at an array of arrays. When we declare a multidimensional array, we're really saying, okay, here's an array, and each element in this kind of array is going to contain another array. Okay? Uh, grab that, because that's really what's the key to making, uh, to making this work. So, if we know that each row here, these five grades, the inner or the second dimension or the column dimension of the array, if we know that that's really an array inside of the larger array, which is the rows, we can say instead of uh, we were copying one integer, we could copy that row. What we need to do is when we switch Jenny and Charlie, if we could take this array put it into a temporary array, move this array down, and then copy this temporary array up into the inner array of numbers. We basically are going to switch this array of numbers. We could do it one number at a time. We could say, okay, let's switch 76 and 88. Let's switch 92 and 91. We could do this one number at a time with, uh, uh, I'm sure, a for loop. We could do that. But what we would like to do is just grab that whole array and just switch the whole array at once. So, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to just go ahead and delete this code here because this was just changing integers in a single uh, column array. And so what we want to do here is we want to grab, uh, actually we need to create a temporary array. So let's go ahead and create a temporary array here and it's going to contain integers. So let's go ahead and start out with um, creating an array. And how many uh, values is it going to have? Well, we don't want to hard code 5 in there. What we want to do is find out how many grades we have. Right now we have five grades, but if we want to add another row of grades, we want to make sure this is dynamic so we can go um, grade. And instead of just grade dot length, we're going to grade, in this case, we're looking at i dot length. Okay? And that declares our array. So, We've just created a new array, and the upper limit of that array is going to be the length of the inner array. If I were just to go like up here, the name dot length, um, that's the first array. Um, on the multi-dimensional array, if I did grade dot length, it would be talking about how many rows there are. If I go grade i, which is row number dot length, that takes a look at that the array inside of the row and says how many numbers are there. So actually if I had um, a ragged array where I'd have three values and five values and six values, this would actually work with that also because it's taking the length of the inside array. Again, this this horizontal array of numbers here in this case. Okay, so we've created this uh, a temporary array and so now all we have to do is is uh, assign the values of those inside arrays to that temporary array just like we did with the uh, numbers. So we're going to go uh, TMP oops, array equals and here we're going to do grade okay now that's the name of the inside array and then Oh, we're, um, yeah, this is good. So this looks very similar, similar to what we did in the first one. So there we have it. We've taken and we swapped the whole array. We created a new array just to, as a temporary array to hold that inside array here as we're swapping it swapping it and we've swapped it just like we did with the name string so okay I'm going to swap the grade array save that and uh, let's go ahead and for format the source and there we have it so now what we've done is we've sorted the names and we're sorting the arrays, the inside array of the multi-dimensional array. And we're just we're doing a, creating a temporary array, and we're assigning the inside array, or the horizontal array, or the column array, if you want to look at it that way, value to temporary array, swapping them just like we did with the names on the single name array, and and doing the uh, the swap row. So there we have it. We have. Um, created a for loop, a double for loop, to um, 
sort the order of our grades now. If we want to go and add another grade, let's go ahead and add another row of grades and make sure that this is going to be dynamic for us. And so we can copy and paste that. And I'm going to quickly change this. I'm going to pause this while I change it so you don't have to waste time on this. Because I've added another uh, row of grades, I need to go and change the dimensions on my uh, assignment here of the array, or we'll have a index out of bounds. So now we've got six grades. And let's see how that works when we run it. There we go. It just added another set of grades to our list, and it obviously came to some rounding errors. So we may want to look at rounding our number off when we do our math function down here. Uh, or when we do our average grade, we may want to round that off to one or two decimals. So there you have it. We have done the outside and the inside loop. Now, I'm going to show you all the code that we've got. Now, it looks like a lot of code. We've started out, we, we declare the arrays, we instantiate them all together, uh, create a temp string and a temp integer, and then we have all of our values that we're assigning to the arrays. And if you look at the top here, we're starting off at line number uh, 20, going down through line number 84. So that's a lot of code to write. Now, if I go look at this code here, uh, this does all of that together. So you can see that we've got the string, the assignment, we're now we, we're declaring it, instantiating it, instantiating it, consigning it values. Here, we're declaring the array, we're instantiating it, we're assigning it values all together. Exact same outcome for these two codes. A lot more writing there than there is here, but again, sometimes it's easier to visualize when you actually assign the numbers like you would assign to a string or to a regular integer. Uh, we've got our sort and then our um, our printing out. Okay. I want to point one more thing out that will hopefully make this a little clearer to you. Right now we're running, again, a parallel array. The string array of names, the integer array of grades. If I were running just the grades, and I wanted to print this out, I could say, okay, I just want the grades, and um, I save that and print that out. Okay. It's printing just the grades, and if you look at, there's a difference here. Here we have grade dot length, and here I have grade i dot length. The grade dot length is the number of rows in this array. The grade i dot length is the number of columns. And so what we have is we have the internal and the external array. The grade dot length, the rows, would be the external array. And remember, the external one is an array of arrays, just like an array of strings, array of integers. This one is an array of arrays. And so when we refer to that inside array, we're going to go grade dot i. Now if we had a three-dimensional array, we could go grade.i.j and we could go inside three dimensions because that would be an array of arrays of arrays. It could get confusing but uh, hopefully that explains it a little bit when you get working with the arrays, multi-dimensional arrays, there's really essentially your outside array and your inside array and it's an array of arrays. Uh, the, the full array, the outside array is actually your rows and the inside array would be your columns in this case. All right, uh, I think that pretty much concludes working with multi-dimensional arrays. Uh, in the chapter, it also covers passing arrays through methods. Um, I might make a video on that too, uh, if uh, time allows. There is, um, it really is not difficult. The book explains it pretty well. Uh, and I think I've pretty much covered this chapter as far as the think concepts that should might be a little difficult to grasp. 
So hopefully this has helped, and hopefully you'll be able to do well on your programming uh, coding.